The Ideal by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts Read for LibriVox.org To her, when life was little worth, when hope, a tide run low, between dim shores of emptiness almost forgot to flow, Faint with the city's fume and stress, I came at night to her, Her cool white fingers on my face, How wonderful they were! More dear they were to fevered lids Than lilies cooled in dew. They touched my lips with tenderness, Till life was born anew. The city's clamor died in calm, And once again I heard The moon-white woodland stillnesses Enchanted by a bird, The wash of far-remembered waves, The sigh of lapsing streams, and one old garden's lilac leaves conferring in their dreams a breath from childhood daisy fields came back to me again here in the city's weary miles of city wearied men end of poem this recording is in the public domain In the Crowd by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts Read for LibriVox.org I walk the city square with thee. The night is loud, the pavements roar. Their eddying mirth and misery encircle thee and me. The street is full of lights and cries, The crowd but brings thee close to me, I only hear thy low replies, I only see thine eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Night in a Downtown Street by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Not in the eyed expectant gloom Where soaring peaks repose And incommunicable space Companions with the snows Not in the glimmering dusk that crawls Upon the clouded sea or bornless wave on bornless wave complains continually not in the palpable dark of woods where groping hands clutch fear does night her deeps of solitude reveal unveiled is here the street is a grim canyon carved in the eternal stone that knows no more the rushing stream it anciently has known the emptying tide of life has drained the iron channel dry strange winds from the forgotten day draw down and dream and sigh the narrow heaven the desolate moon made wan with endless years seem less immeasurably remote than laughter love or tears end a poem this recording is in the public domain. At the Railway Station by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Here the night is fierce with light, Here the great wheels come and go, Here are partings, waitings, meetings, Mysteries of joy and woe, here's endless haste and change 
hear the ache of streaming eyes radiance of expectant faces breathless askings brief replies hear the jarred tumultuous air throbs and pauses like a bell gladdens with delight of greeting sighs and sorrows with farewell hear ah hear with hungry eyes i explore the passing throng restless i await your coming whose least absence is so long faces faces pass me by meaningless and blank and dumb till my heart grows faint and sickens lest at last you should not come then i see you and the blood surges back to heart and brain eyes meet mine and heaven opens you are at my side again end of poem this recording is in the public domain nocturnes of the honeysuckle one by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org by josh kibbe forever shed your sweetness on the night dear honeysuckle flower of our delight forever breathe the mystery of that hour when her hand touched me lightlier than a flower and life became forever strange and sweet a gift to lay with worship at her feet end of poem this recording is in the public domain nocturnes of the honeysuckle two by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org by josh kibbe o oh, flower of the honeysuckle tell me how often the long night through she turns in her dream to the open window she turns in her dream to you o oh, flower of the honeysuckle tell me how tenderly out of the dew you breathe her a dream of that night of wonder when life was fashioned anew o oh, flower of the honeysuckle tell me how long ere the sweet night through she will turn not to you but to me in the darkness and a dream and desire come true end of poem this recording is in the public domain my garden by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org by josh kibbe i have a garden in the city's grime where secretly my heart keeps summer time where blow such airs of rapture on my eyes as those blessed dreamers know in paradise who after lives of longing come at last where anguish of vain love is overpast when the broad noon lies shadeless on the street and traffic roars and toilers faint with heat where men forget that ever woods were green the wonders of my garden are not seen only at night the magic doors disclose its labyrinths of lavender and rose and honeysuckle white beneath its moon whispers me softly thou art coming soon and led by love's white hand upon my wrist beside its glimmering fountains i keep tryst o oh, love this moving fragrance on my hair is it thy breath or some enchanted air from far uncharted realms of mystery which i have dreamed of but shall never see o oh, love this low wild music in my ears is it the heartbeat of thy hopes and fears or the faint cadence of some fairy song on winds of boyhood memory blown along o oh, love what poignant ecstasy is this upon my lips and eyes thy touch thy kiss end of poem this recording is in the public domain presence by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org by campbell shelp dawn like a lily lies upon the land since i have known the whiteness of your hand dusk is more soft and more mysterious where breathes on my eyes the perfume of your hair waves at your coming break in livelier blue and solemn woods are glad because of you brooks of your laughter learn their liquid notes birds to your voice attune their pleading throats fields to your feet grow smoother and more green and happy blossoms tell where you have been end of poem this recording is in the public domain twilight on sixth avenue by sir charles g d roberts read 
for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Over the tops of the houses, twilight and sunset meet. The green diaphanous dusk sinks to the eager street. Astray in the tangle of roofs wanders a wind of June. The dial shines in the clock tower like the face of a strange scrawled moon. The narrowing lines of the houses palely begin to gleam. The hurrying crowds fade softly like an army in a dream. Above the vanishing faces a phantom train flares on with a voice that shakes the shadows diminishes and is gone and i walk with a journeying throng in such a solitude as where a lonely ocean washes a lonely wood end a poem this recording is in the public domain the street lamps by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org eyes of the city keeping your sleepless watch from sun to sun is it for pity you tremble seeing innocence undone or do you laugh to think men thus should set spies on the folly they would fain forget end of poem this recording is in the public domain in darkness by sir charles g d roberts read for LibriVox .org. I have faced life with courage, but not now. O oh, infinite, in this darkness draw thou near. Wisdom alone I asked of thee, but thou hast crushed me with the awful gift of fear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Solitude of the City by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts, read for LibriVox.org by Campbell Shelp. Night and the sound of voices in the street, night and the happy laughter where they meet the glad boy lover and the trysting girl but thou but thou i cannot find thee sweet night and far off the lighted pavements roar night and the dark of sorrow keeps my door i reach my hand out trembling in the dark thy hand comes not with comfort any more o oh, silent unresponding if these fears lie not nor other wisdom come with years no day shall dawn for me without regret no night go uncompanioned by my tears end of poem this recording is in the public domain a nocturne of exile by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org by campbell shelp out of this night of lonely noise the city's crowded cries home of my heart to thee to thee i turn my longing eyes years years how many years i went in exile wearily before i lifted up my face and saw my home in thee i had come home to thee at last i saw thy warm lights gleam i entered thine abiding joy oh was it but a dream ere i could reckon with my heart the sum of our delight I was in exile once again, here in the hastening night. Thy doors were shut, thy lights were gone, from my remembering eyes. Only the city's endless throng, only the crowded cries. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
A Street Vigil by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts, read for LibriVox.org by Maria Melodia Carey. Here is the street made holy by the passing of her feet, the little tender feet more sweet than myrrh, which I have washed with tears for love of her. Here she has gone, until the very stones have taken on a glory from her passing, and the place is tremulous with memory of her face. Here is the room that holds the light to lighten all my gloom. Beyond that blank white window she is sleeping, who hath my hope, my health, my fame in keeping. A little peace, here for a little, ere my vigil cease and i turn homeward shaken with the strife of hope that struggles hopeless sick for life surely the power that lifted me from darkness that one hour to a dear heaven whereof no word can tell not wantonly will thrust me back to hell end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Nocturne of Trysting by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts Read for LibriVox.org by Maria Melodia Carey Broods the hid glory in its sheath of gloom Till strikes the destined hour and bursts the bloom A rapture of white passion and perfume so the long day is like a bud that aches with coming bliss till flowers in light the wondrous night that brings me to thy kiss then with a thousand sorrows forgotten in one hour in thy pure eyes and at thy feet i find at last my goal and life and hope and joy seem but a faint prevision of the flower that is thy body and the flame that is thy soul End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In a City Room by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts Read for LibriVox.org by Maria Melodia Carey O city night of noises and alarms! Your lights may flare, your cables clang and rush, But in the sanctuary of my love's arms Your blinding tumult dies into a hush my doors are surged about with your unrest your plangent cares assail my realm of peace but when i come unto her quiet breast how suddenly your jar and clamour cease then even remembrance of your strifes and pains diminishes to a ghost of sorrows gone remoter than a dream of last year's rains gusty against my window in the dawn End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Nocturne of Consecration by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts Read for LibriVox.org by Josh Kibbe I talked about you, dear, the other night, having myself alone with my delight, alone with dreams and memories of you all the divine houred summer stillness through. I talked of life, of love the always new, of tears and joy, yet only talked of you. To the sweet air that breathed upon my face, the spirit of lilies in a leafy place, your breath's caress, the lingering of your hair, I said, in all your wandering through the dusk, your waitings on the marriages of flowers, through the long intimate hours when soul and sense, desire and love confer, you must have known the best that God has made. What do you know of her? Said the sweet air, since I have touched her lips, bringing the consecration of her kiss, half passion and half prayer, and all for you, my various lore has suffered an eclipse. I have forgot all else of sweet I knew. To the wise earth, kind and companionable and dewy cool, fair beyond words to tell, as you are fair, and cunning past compare to leash all heaven in a windless pool, I said, the mysteries of death and birth are in your care. You love and sleep, you drain life to the lees, and wonderful things you know. Angels have visited you, and at your knees learned what I learned forever at her eyes, the pain that still enhances paradise. You in your breast felt her first pulses stir, and you have thrilled to the light touch of her feet, blindingly sweet. Now make me wise with some new word of her. Said the wise earth, 
she is not all my child but the wild spirit that rules her heart beats wild as of diviner birth and kin to the unknown light beyond my ken all i can give to her have i not given strength to be glad to suffer and to know the sorcery that subdues the souls of men the beauty that is as the shadow of heaven the hunger of love and unspeakable joy thereof and these are dear to her because of you you need no word of mine to make you wise who worship at her eyes and find their life and love forever new to the white stars eternal and all seen in their wide home beyond the wells of bean i said there is a little cloud that mars the mystical perfection of her kiss mine mine she is as far as lip to lip and heart to heart and spirit to spirit when lips and hands must part can make her mine but there is more than this more more of her to know for still her soul escapes me unaware to dwell in secret where i may not go take and uplift me make me wholly hers said the white stars the heavenly ministers this life is brief but it is only one before to-morrow's sun for one or both of you it may be done this love of yours has only just begun will all the ecstasy that may be won before this life its little course is run at all suffice the love that agonizes in your eyes therefore be wise content you with the wonder of love that lies between her lips and underneath her eyes if more you should surprise what would be left to hope from paradise in other worlds expect another joy of her which blundering fate shall not annoy nor time nor change destroy so dear i talked the long divine night through and felt you in the chrismal balms of dew the thing then learned is ever since within my bosom burned one life is not enough for love of you end of poem this recording is in the public domain an evening communion by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org by josh kibbe the large first stars come out above the open hill and in the west the light is lingering still the wide and tranquil air of evening washes cool on open hill and vale and shining pool the calm of endless time is in the spacious hour whose mystery unfolds to perfect flower the silence and my heart expect a voice i know a voice we have not heard since long ago since long ago thy face thy smile i may not see true comrade whom the veil divides from me but when earth's hidden word i almost understand i dream that on my lips i feel thy hand thy presence is the light upon the open hill thou walkest with me here true comrade still my pain and my unrest thou takest into thy care the world becomes a dream and life a prayer end of poem this recording is in the public domain life and art by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org by josh kibbe said life to art i love thee best not when i find in thee my very face and form expressed with dull fidelity but when in thee my craving eyes behold continually the mystery of my memories and all i long to be end of poem this recording is in the public domain beyond the tops of time by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org by josh kibbe how long it was i did not know that i had waited watched and feared it seemed a thousand years ago the last pale lights had disappeared i knew the place was a narrow room up up beyond the reach of doom then came a light more red than flame no sun dawn but the soul laid bare of earth and sky and sea became a presence burning everywhere and i was glad my narrow room was high above the reach of doom windows there were in either wall deep cleft and set with radiant glass where through i watched the mountains fall the ages wither up and pass i knew their doom could never climb my tower beyond the tops of time a sea of faces then i saw of men who had been men long dead figured with dreams of joy and awe the heavens enrolled in lambent red while far below the faces cried give us the dream for which we died ever the woven shapes rolled by above the faces hungering with quiet and incurious eye i noted many a wondrous thing seas of clear glass and singing streams in that high pageantry of dreams cities of sard and chrysoprase where choired hosannas never cease valhallas of celestial phrase 
and lotus pools of endless peace but still the faces gaped and cried give us the dream for which we died at length my quiet heart was stirred hearing them cry so long in vain but while i listened for a word that should translate them from their pain i saw that here and there a face shone and was lifted from its place and flashed into the moving dome an ecstasy of prismed fire and then said i a soul has come to the deep zenith of desire but still i wondered if it knew the dream for which it died was true i wondered who shall say how long one heartbeat thrice ten thousand years till suddenly there was no throng of faces to arraign the spheres no more white faces there to cry to those great pageants of the sky then quietly i grew aware of one who came with eyes of bliss and brow of calm and lips of prayer said i how wonderful is this where are the faces once that cried give us the dream for which we died the answer fell as soft as sleep i am of those who having cried so long in that tumultuous deep have won the dream for which we died and then said i which dream was true for many were revealed to you he answered to the soul made wise all true all beautiful they seem but the white peace that fills our eyes outdoes desire outreaches dream for we are coming to the place where always we behold god's face end of poem this recording is in the public domain dream fellows by sir charles g d roberts read for LibriVox.org by nemo behind the veil that men call sleep i came upon a golden land a golden light was in the leaves and on the amethystine strand amber and gold and emerald the unimaginable wood and in a joy i could not name beside the emerald stream i stood down from a violet hill came one running to meet me on the shore i clasped his hand he seemed to be one i had long been waiting for all the sweet sounds i ever heard in his low greeting seemed to blend his were the eyes of my true love his was the mouth of my true friend we spoke and the transfigured words meant more than words had ever meant our lips at last forgot to speak for silence was so eloquent we floated in the emerald stream we wandered in the wondrous wood his soul to me was clear as light my inmost thought he understood only to be was to be glad life like a rainbow filled our eyes in comprehending comradeship each moment seemed a paradise and often in the after years i and my dream fellow were one for hours together in that land behind the moon beyond the sun at last in the tumultuous dream that men call life i chanced to be one day amid the city throng where the great piers opposed the sea a giant ship was swinging off for other seas and other skies amid the voyaging companies i saw his face i saw his eyes oh passionately through the crowd i thrust and then our glances met across the widening gulf we gazed with white set lips and eyes grown wet and all day long my heart was faint with parting pangs and tears unwept till night brought comfort for he came to meet me smiling when i slept beyond the veil that men call sleep we met within that golden land he said or i we grieve to-day but now more wise we understand communing in the common world the flesh for us would be a bar strange would be our familiar speech and earth would seem no more a star we'd know no more the golden leaves beside the amethystine deep we'd see no more each other's thought behind the veil that men call sleep end a poem this recording is in the public domain the atlantic cable by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox.org by phone
this giant nerve at whose command the world's great pulses throb or sleep it threads the undiscerned repose of the dark bases of the deep around it settle in the calm fine tissues that a breath might mar nor dream what fiery tidings pass what messages of storm and war far over it where filtered gleams faintly illume the midday sea strange pallid forms of fish or weed in the obscure tide softly sway and higher where the vagrant waves frequent the white indifferent sun where ride the smoke-blue hordes of rain and the long vapours lift and run passes perhaps some lonely ship with exile hearts that homeward ache while far beneath is flashed a word that soon shall bid them bleed or break end of poem this recording is in the public domain when the clover blooms again by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org by phone when the clover blooms again and the rainbirds in the rain make the sad heart noon seem sweeter and the joy of june completer i shall see his face again of her lover over sea so she whispered happily and she prayed while men were sleeping mary have him in thy keeping as he sails the stormy sea white and silent lay his face in a still green-watered place where the long grey weed scarce lifted and the sand was lightly sifted o'er his unremembering face end of poem this recording is in the public domain at tide water by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org by phone the red and yellow of the autumn salt grass the grey flats and the yellow grey full tide the lonely stacks the grave expanse of marshes o oh, land wherein my memories abide i have come back that you may make me tranquil resting a little at your heart of peace remembering much amid your serious leisure forgetting more amid your large release for yours the wisdom of the night and morning the word of the inevitable years the open heaven's unobscured communion and the dim whisper of the wheeling spheres the great things and the terrible i bring you to be illumined in your spacious breath love and the ashes of desire and anguish strange laughter and the unhealing wound of death these in the world all these have come upon me leaving me mute and shaken with surprise oh turn them in your measureless contemplation and in their mastery teach me to be wise End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Falling Leaves by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts. Read for LibriVox.org by phone. Lightly he blows, and at his breath they fall. The perishing kindreds of the leaves, they drift, spend flames of scarlet, gold aerial across the hollow year noiseless and swift lightly he blows and countless as the falling of snow by night upon a solemn sea the ages circle down beyond recalling to strew the hollows of eternity he sees them drifting through the spaces dim and leaves and ages are as one to him end of poem this recording is in the public domain Marjorie by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts, read for LibriVox.org by phone. 
Marjorie, a backwoods ballad. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, over the wild world rolls the year. Comes June to the rose red tamarack buds, but Marjorie comes not here. The pastures miss her. The house without her grows forgotten and grey and old. The wind and the lonely light of the sun are heavy with tears untold. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, morning, evening, over and o'er. The swallow returns to the nested rafter, but Marjorie comes no more. The grey barn doors in the long wind rattle hour by hour of the long white day the horses fret by the well-filled manger since marjorie went away the sheep she fed at the bars await her the milch cows low for her down the lane they long for her light light hand at the milking they long for her hand in vain spring summer autumn winter morning and evening over and o'er the bees come back with the willow catkins but marjorie comes no more the voice of the far-off city called to her was it long years or an hour ago she went away with dear eyes weeping to a world she did not know the buried pastures they could not keep her the brook nor the buttercup golden hill nor even the long long love familiar the strange voice called her still she would not stay for the old home garden the scarlet poppy the mignonette the foxglove bell and the kind-eyed pansy their hearts will not forget oh that her feet had not forgotten the woodland country the homeward way oh to look out of the sad bright window and see her come back some day spring summer autumn winter over the wild world rolls the year comes joy to the bird on the nested rafter but marjorie comes not here end of poem this recording is in the public domain the solitary woodsman by sir charles g d roberts read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. When the gray lake water rushes past the dripping alder bushes, and the bodeful autumn wind, and the fir tree weeps and hushes, when the air is sharply damp round the solitary camp, and the moose bush in the thicket glimmers like a scarlet lamp, when the birches twinkle yellow and the cornell bunches mellow and the owl across the twilight trumpets to his downy fellow when the nut-fed chipmunks romp through the maple's crimson pomp and the slim viburnum flushes in the darkness of her swamp when the blueberries are dead when the rowan clusters red and the shy bear summer sleekened and the bracken makes his bed on a day there comes once more to the latched and lonely door down the wood road striding silent one who's been here before green spruce branches for his head here he makes a simple bed couching with the sun and rising when the dawn is frosty red all day long he wanders wide with the gray moss for his guide and his lonely axe stroke startles the expectant forest side toward the quiet close of day back to camp he takes his way and about his sober footsteps unafraid the squirrels play on his roof the red leaf falls at his door the blue jay calls and he hears the wood mice hurry up and down his rough log walls hears the laughter of the loon thrill the dying afternoon hears the calling of the moose echo to the early moon and he hears the partridge drumming the belated hornet humming all the faint prophetic sounds that foretell the winter's coming and the wind about his eaves through the chilly night wet greaves and the earth's dumb patient fills him fellow 
to the falling leaves. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Stirrup Cup by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts. Read for LibriVox.org by phone. Life at my stirrup lifted wistful eyes, and as she gave the parting cup to me, that's pale companion for the silent tea. I know, she said, that land and where it lies, a pledge between us now before you go, that when you meet me there, your soul may know. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ice by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts, read for LibriVox.org by phone. When winter scourged the meadow and the hill, and in the withered leafage worked his will, the water shrank and shuddered and stood still. Then built himself a magic house of glass, irised with memories of flowers and grass wherein to sit and watch the fury pass end of poem this recording is in the public domain the hermit by sir charles g d roberts read for librivox dot org by nemo above the blindness of content the ignorance of ease inhabiting within his soul a shrine of memories between the silences of sleep attentively he hears the endless crawling sob and strain the spending of the years he sees the lapsing stream go by his unperturbed face out of a dark into a dark across a lighted space he calls it life this lighted space upon the moving flood he sees the water white with tears he sees it red with blood in many specks upon the tide he sees and marks by name motes of a day and fools of fate and challengers of fame with here a people there a babe a blossom or a crown they whirl a little gleam and pass or in the eddies drown he waits he waits one day to see the lapsing of the stream the eddying forms the darknesses dissolve into a dream end a poem this recording is in the public domain o thou who biddest by sir charles g d roberts Read for LibriVox.org O thou who biddest a million germs decay, That one white bloom may soar into the day, Mine eyes unseal to see their souls in death, Born back to thee upon the lily's breath, End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ascription by Sir Charles G. D. Roberts. Read for LibriVox.org by phone. O thou who hast beneath thy hand the dark foundations of the land, the motion of whose ordered thought an instant universe hath wrought who hast within thine equal heed the rolling sun the ripening seed the azure of the speedwell's eye the vast solemnities of sky who hears no less the feeble note of one small bird's awakening throat than that unnamed tremendous chord archerous sounds before his lord more sweet to thee than all acclaim of storm and ocean stars and flame in favour more before thy face than pageantry of time and space 
the worship and the service be of him thou madest most like thee who in his nostrils hath thy breath whose spirit is the lord of death end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of new york nocturnes and other poems by sir charles g d roberts